to you from the old bird farm today and it what a beautiful morning it is an absolutely beautiful morning here in Georgia I had to um, hurry up and make this video go live so it's still morning when I titled it but it is and what a beautiful day here and that's what we're gonna talk about on this live video we're gonna walk around the farm and um, just have a have a chat and enjoy the beauty out here today um, so we're going to start this video off by going out here to the uh, front of the farm and I'm going to uh, show it to you today and then we'll talk about uh, some reasons why this day is so special to me. All right, there we go. So here's the road in front of the farmhouse. and the neighbor's old horse field over there and these gorgeous, gorgeous blue skies today. And what an absolutely lovely day it is. And Blue is out here with us today. Blue, say hey man. He's super excited to be back out here on the farm. It's been a few weeks since he's been out here, really. Now, as we walk back into the old bird farm, you see all of the, uh, the muck. It still hasn't dried up from all of the rain that we had the other day. But the weather's looking good coming up this week the weather's looking beautiful so um hopefully uh it's supposed to be low humidity um cooler temperatures georgia took fall at least this week georgia took fall very seriously and the weather immediately changed for fall um it's the low is like 60 degrees um the high is in the 70s so four week we have fall here in Georgia and that won't last long. It'll be super duper hot here. <laughs> Again, because it's Georgia, summer, I know that summer is gonna come back for one last grasp here in Georgia, at least it traditionally does. So um, we're gonna enjoy this, this week of fall that we have um, here today. Usually the weather in Georgia is two seasons. Um, it's either summer or winter. Um, and of course, the southern winter is not what most people consider winter, but um, usually here it's either really hot or really cold, but it's absolutely beautiful um, today and we're, we're just gonna enjoy it. So somebody in the uh, comments here says that they sent me a picture um, on uh, Tyrannical is a username. I sent the information on Instagram. I do not have an Instagram page anymore um and facebook messenger um so i will have to look um through my messages i have received a lot of messages over the past few weeks and i was already behind on messages before that um so i'm extra behind on messages now um so i have to look through and uh, see where it is um I would say uh, if, uh, well, just tell me where you sent it. Um, I'm assuming you either sent it to the, uh, the Bird House Facebook page, which I don't do much with, or the um, Sidestep Adventures Facebook page. So I'll go look on there and see if I can find it. Uh, but that being said, we'll flip the camera around here and take a look at the house. Um, I've got the flag. I need to put the flag back out. I took it down in the storm the other day. Um, I actually do have an all weather flag and uh, flag code permits you to fly the flag as long as it's lit in um, stormy weather if you have an all-weather flag and I do but it was it was too much the other day um, still have the chairs and the grill set out here from the little get-together the other day and just a beautiful day on the front lawn. Now, the other thing 
that we need to do is mow the grass out here or mow the wisteria. Um, I actually do have grass. Let's bring you over here. Since I cleared out all the stuff, because, you know, if you guys remember when we started out here, you couldn't see anything here. This was all, this was a wall of vegetation here. And it was a wall of vegetation here. You could not see the house from where we're standing um, right now. But now that we can get sun down here on the ground, we have grass coming back up. I don't know what kind of grass it is, but it's some kind of grass. And there's some kind of pretty little flower blooming there. Some kind of wildflower or weed whatever it is. Um, Paula, here's your fig tree that you brought me down a while back. I think your dad brought it down. It's right there. And there's a one of these uh, butterfly bushes I put in the ground and I actually accidentally mowed this down with the bush hog. Um, so it's coming back. Um, this is the second growth for that this year. Blueberries are over here, but they're they're all done for the year and um, here's our last surviving peach tree Somebody asked about the peach tree the other day and um, the Peach tree the other peach tree um, Didn't uh, didn't do very well some kind of weedy thing growing up here beside this peach tree, too I'll leave that I'll leave that for now, but anyway, uh, we need to mow I'm trying to flip the camera back around so I this is one thing about live videos um that uh i don't i don't like it's how shaky it is um so i apologize about that because when i do videos i like it to be smooth and high quality look at blue back there he's just thrilled to be out here and also the cooler weather so he's loving it too um we have buzzards that come out here on the farm and like to sit on top of the house or on the shed out behind the uh the house out there and blue just he loves just chasing them chasing them he doesn't chase the uh chickens or the guineas or the turkey but he chases the uh, buzzards or the hawks or anything that fly around um paula uh i just saw you ask about the fig tree it's doing very well it's right there right there it's replacing the uh the other uh peach tree that got broken out here which i've got to get another peach tree um out here too to replace that one but i put the fig tree right there so it's growing there very nicely and i definitely appreciate that fig tree um that is the i have two fig trees growing out here um one is the one that your dad brought down here for me that's the one i just showed you the other one is growing by the chicken coop and i put it over there by the chicken coop because somebody um, had told me that they remembered having a fig tree at their um, Their parents farm grandparents farm something like that and it was right beside the chicken coop So I thought that was a, a neat idea. So I put it beside the chicken coop I just have to keep an extra sharp eye out on it to make sure the chickens or the turkey or the guineas don't eat it But there's the other fig tree now. I had bought another fig tree um, uh, it, But it unfortunately died so uh, just the surviving ones are the ones that Paula's dad gave to me and the one by the chicken coop, which is in all manner of muck over here. Just ignore the random piece of tin that blew out onto the ground there. There's the other fig tree. And the absolutely disgusting, disgusting old bird farm ground out here today now we'll walk you over here and show you the road today too i think you guys saw it the other day when i was doing a live video out here when scott stopped by and it was all just muck now this road is dried out um very well except for up here obviously this is the part that daniel has um has uh helped me with and we worked on and that's the part this is where we stopped the line where we stopped so I drove down here in the um, in the uh, Jeep the other day because um, I had stuff to take to the chicken coop and kind of messed it up. But just the fact we were able to get through here at all was pretty cool. Uh, somebody asked um, why Charlotte was that. Yeah, Charlotte asked why I got rid of Instagram and because 
um, I, I didn't I didn't want to do that anymore um, I can only take so much social media at one time and it's difficult enough to juggle YouTube and, and the Facebook page so I wanted to just focus on the um, uh, the YouTube and, and the Facebook side of sidestep adventures is blue running up the road we're um, gonna go over here and look at the orange tree somebody asked about which I forgot about it um, honestly I have not uh, I haven't looked at it in a while those things um, grow pretty prolifically around here I've seen them at a bunch of home sites um, around here they were a uh, uh, I guess a plant that was very common in the antebellum era, but they uh, they are considered an invasive species, but at the same time, they don't get very big. Here, at least, um, the ones that I've seen have been growing um, since, you know, the mid-1800s and haven't gotten much bigger than the, uh, you know, the little holly tree that's over there, which I'll point it out to you. Right right there, the little holly tree there. I've never seen them get much bigger than that because I know a lot of people were concerned about them being, about it being so close to the uh, wall over here and um, that it was invasive species, but I'm, uh, I'm not worried about that. But it's over here and uh, let's flip the camera around. It's in this sea of wisteria, still hanging on very well right there. I think it's, uh, it's grown a little bit for sure um, as it was, it was down there when we planted it, so it's it's growing pretty quick, and it's got these big thorns on it. Now, I forgot exactly what kind of orange tree this is, um, but it's a, it's an old one. And then there's our uh, swan bird bath with that at the top. That. Uh, over here being eaten alive by the wisteria look at this is a great example of how quick the wisteria grows out here you guys probably remember when i brought this out here and i don't remember how long ago it was um i did a video when i brought this out here so we could easily find out but check this out look at the wisteria has already grown this huge vine up over this bird bath holding this down into the ground there see right there that is crazy that in that short amount of time the wisteria grew that big of vine over here now I just saw somebody comment and ask if I plan on killing more wisteria and the answer is of course of course that's one of my main goals in life is to eradicate wisteria and spread the word that wisteria is an evil evil plant um, eventually I'll use, someone just asked why I don't use herbicide on wisteria and eventually I've got some in the shed. Um, my cousin um, actually brought me down some a while back. I just haven't got around to it yet. Plus some of the places where I want to spray, um, I can't spray like around that orange tree and that sort of thing. So, you know, we'll get to it. Um, look at all of that. Beautiful spider lilies still blooming over here. It's a good question. Where did my love of old things come from? Um, it's something I've talked about before. Part of it, I, I don't know. Um, the others, other uh, reasons like the love of history um, when I was blue blue come on man yes, he just went in the woods over there um, before I, I get back to this um, Peter asks how the funding for the house roof is I have the house roof um, we're just waiting to put it on the house I hear I hear blue coming now getting back to the other um, question about my love of old things and I'm assuming you mean history um, you know that sort of thing so when I was a kid my mom was really big into genealogy um, and uh, we would go 
around to old family cemeteries and um, old family home sites and stuff like that. And, and you know, my mom would drag me around to these places when I was a kid. And it wasn't just my mom. It was, um, my, I'd, I'd go out with my uncles and my grandmother too, um, to these places. And my grandmother was from Sumter County and we would go visit places where she grew up down there, places where she worked down there, the old mill um, down there and stuff like that. And hearing all of these stories from her, in addition to going and seeing these places with my mom, um, it just gave me a love of, of history um, ever since I was, I was a little kid. You know, you think that a little kid that would be drug around for, to old cemeteries would hate that sort of thing, but I loved it as a kid, you know, seeing, because my family cemeteries are the same as the cemeteries that I film on Sidestep Adventures. A majority of them are, you know, they're ones that are off in the woods. You've seen my uh, third great grandfather's grave on the Sidestep Adventures channel. He, he was buried behind a house out in, in the woods. And when I was a kid and went to that cemetery, um, and that was one that always stuck with me because it was it was deep in the woods and you just had these these two graves out there um, And it's very similar to the same sort of stuff. I film now um, Because my family has uh, you know, they they were always poor dirt farmers as it were so a lot of the uh, same types of old family cemeteries That I film now that are just out lost in the woods are the same as uh, my family cemeteries were um, that I would see as a kid so that um that's where that came from um that love of history came from is just from you know having that stuff I, I say forced upon me um but i don't mean it in a bad way you know just uh that's what happened and and i loved it um so as far as like old cars and stuff go that's actually kind of an interesting thing too um and i've talked about this before in different forums um when i was a kid uh, growing up my family was, was poor um back then and i don't mean that in a negative way it's just fact um they never uh drove the newest cars um when i was young when i was a kid they never drove the newest cars um it was always you know uh back in the 90s they were driving cars from the 70s and you know and so being around that um you know when i, I became kind of a, a car guy i guess you'd say um, I always liked the old cars and as far as working on the cars um, Growing up we always worked on the cars ourselves out here So, you know, um, they couldn't afford to uh, to pay anybody to work on the car. So it was um, You know some some family member working on on uh, My grandma's car my uncle working on my uncle's car um, and of course great-uncle Ken um, and his old trucks he's you guys have seen him on this channel and seen the old um, 60 uh, 69 I think it is a Chevy truck that he drives um, he used to drive a 65 Chevy pickup truck um, which is the same as pickup version of the panel truck that I've got stuff like that so you know all this um, fond memories of of old vehicles and uh, old trucks going down dirt roads you know that's what uh, kind of uh, uh, made me interested in the old cars, I guess you'd say, um, uh, and not, you know, not sports cars or anything like that. You know, give me, give me some, some old car. Um, Peter asked how uncle is getting on. Um, he's good. Uh, we were just together, um, Sunday. Um, I, I, Walter and I rode together down to Sumter County, um, and uh, we picked Ken up and took him with us um, down there. So we were together that day. Very melancholy time together, but uh, a good time together as well. But he's doing good. Um, and we're in the back pasture back here. Um, what you see, Blue? Blue. Hey, what you looking at? To make sure he doesn't see a uh, see a snake or something. Um, somebody commented in there, um, and it's something that I've actually you had a uh, uh, made made a valid point there. His people used to picnic 
in cemeteries back in the 20s. And that's true. Um, cemeteries have, my interest in cemeteries is historical. You know, you go to an old cemetery and it's like going through a library, but you can only see the names of the books. You can't actually read the names of the books. In other words, you see all these people's names who came and went and you see their names the day they were born, the day they died, but you only get that, you don't get their whole life story. But they, um, they're, they're a whole story in the cemetery. And sometimes we're able to put these um, stories together um, about these people who are there. Um, but uh, so I see my interest in cemeteries is a strictly historic perspective. You know, I don't go out there um, ghost hunting or stuff like that. Um, or creeped out by it like you know a lot of people are it's just it's just an old cemetery it's just it's history there but um getting back to what i was going to talk about and what somebody mentioned um is that uh cemeteries used to be uh treated more like parks you know you would uh go out to the cemetery after church or something like that um and you go have a picnic at the old family cemetery and um have uh have these good times out there at these cemeteries and they've they've gotten uh that that mentality of going and visiting these places and treating them as parks um has uh has gone away um but i think it's just a beautiful idea um that uh that people going and picnicking in cemeteries back in the you know in that time period in the 20s um it's something that it's a it's a shame that that kind of uh, mentality has gotten lost um when it comes to that sort of thing to appreciating um this history and you know we, people talk about different forms of of respect and disrespect in a cemetery um and you know they uh um they Sorry, I got distracted by a message there. Um, I'll look at it in a minute. Um, uh, people talk about different kinds of, uh, of respect and disrespect in cemeteries. And some people, you know, may think, you know, going and, and picnicking amongst the dead in the cemetery would be disrespectful or something like that, but it's not at all. You know, it's about um, going out there and, and honoring those people. Now, personally, I probably, I say all of that, but I personally probably would not go out and picnic in a cemetery. Um, but I like the idea of how it used to be, you know. Um, so we're in the back pasture now. I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'll look at some of these comments. Um, this is another place that I need to come up here and mow. And here's Blue. Very happy to be back here on the farm again. Um, but I need to come up here and mow again as well. We got to get the tractor running. Um, I, I still need to come up here and snip out um, these trees up here. But we've got the pretty pasture. Now, when I first started out here, this pasture was, let me flip the camera around so I can give you an example. This pasture was up to here. Um, it was actually really cool driving the tractor through all of this where, when you had, you know, uh, tractor or the grass is up to here on me up there on the tractor. Um, we were really just pushing through this um, and a lot of it was just bramble and that sort of thing and now that we've cut it um, it's turned into uh, this this grass some kind of grass here. Um, I don't know if this is remnants of planted hay um, because it did used to be hay growing up here if this is just some kind of wild grass I don't know but I do want to turn this into a fieldy area up here um so love this area love this area back here and i was going to talk to you too about why um this day in particular is so special to me um and it's it's not the day it's not uh september 20 whatever it is um but it's uh, it's the the mood of today the the weather the feeling um back when i first started um on the farm here um about a year ago. We're coming up at a year out here on the old bird farm here. Um, the weather was like this and it was um, it was a scary time for sure because I, I was I had just started doing 
um, YouTube full time. And I hadn't even started this channel yet at that time. I was, um, I was doing YouTube full time, um, sidestep adventures only. And, uh, we hadn't started with the farm or anything. And I would, um, I would film once or twice a week for sidestep adventures and then not, not really do anything else, you know, during the week. Um, and, uh, and so I, I decided, you know, this, this piece of property, um, that I've got out here, I can come out here and work on it now. And, uh, of course I started filming, um, it too. Um, but I didn't start filming it right away. I started filming it after I'd already started, but it was a, um, it was a scary time for sure, because you were making that unknown leap of faith into having a, a job security into making YouTube videos full time. And so, um, it was, uh, like I said, it was a, it was a scary time, but it was also a very good time. Um, because this was when the farm, um, when me and the farm were getting to know each other, um, for the first time, um, out here and getting to know each other like this. And I would come out here and just, just enjoy the land. You know, um, it would be days like today where it was cold in the morning, uh, Georgia cold in the morning, not, not Northern cold in the morning, but uh, when it was cold in the morning and warm in the afternoon, and I would drive my Jeep up to the back pasture here um, as soon as I opened that road up. Um, I'd drive my Jeep up here and I would sit up here and have breakfast and um, then go back to work you could walk up to the front of the farm to go work and clear around the house. And those were just, those were really good times. Those were good times that, uh, I didn't realize how good they were, um, at the time. And now, um, I can, I can step back and say, you know, those were really good days. Um, back then, of course, the good days are still, are still coming, you know, um, out here. Uh, but it's just it's nice to uh to sometimes sit back and reflect on a year ago where i was a year ago and where i'm at now with all of this so that, that may not have made sense to you guys it made sense to me um but just a real special special day for me um just getting out here and um kind of coming back around to uh some sense of of peace out here um and getting ready to get back to it um so that's uh that's that also as a, these are always my favorite days as a kid, um, growing up, uh, in Georgia days like today when it was, you know, not too hot, not cold. Um, Danielle says Georgia cold is 40 degrees. It's perfect outdoor working weather. It gets, I don't know, Georgia gets down into the thirties. Give me that. Give me that at least. Um, I've missed a bunch of messages on here comments um so um sorry if i've i've missed what you've said but we would i'd bring the uh, the wagoneer right up here park it there eat breakfast on the farm and um then walk back up here to to work and uh, it was nice it was really nice now now i can barely make it up the field road of course but uh blue come on Anyway, love it today. Love it today. Um, so now that we've talked about um, uh, f feeling better out here, oops, feeling better out here on the farm than I felt in a month, two months maybe, um, and talk about some stuff that we've got upcoming um, video-wise. Um, so a couple of cool things that have happened um, is I got another camera. Um, a buddy of mine, Brent, who's been on the channel. He has a uh, YouTube channel too. He hasn't been on this channel. He was over on Sidestep Adventures channel. Um, we went and looked at an old syrup kettle out in the woods and um, uh, an old cemetery out in the woods with Brent. And we talked about his channel on there. Um, I don't remember the names of those videos, but Brent's been on this, on Sidestep Adventures before. But he, uh, he and I traded out um, cameras so he's got a, uh, a TV production camera um, that uh, uh, that's pretty nice. Um, we traded out my Canon for his uh, Sony production camera, and um, it's a it's a learning curve for sure. It's just a big camera, um, but it's the same kind of camera that Walter. You guys know Walter films with me sometimes out here. Same kind of camera 
that uh, Walter used to use when he worked in um, the news and worked in video production. So uh, uh, he and I will be coming out here. Um, he'll probably be coming out here a little bit more often with me um, at filming videos out here on that. So tomorrow we're actually going to get together and um, film um, out here. So that'll be, and we, we may do some other stuff too that's not on the farm um, filming tomorrow. Just got to see how the day goes. But the first video, the first video, and I probably told you guys this the other day, the first video that we're going to get back to it um, out here on the farm is getting that tractor running again. I've shown you why <laughs> all these places um, that are overgrowing. Um, we got to have that back going again. So um, tomorrow that's what we're going to do. Um, try to get the tractor started again, film it, and uh, hopefully get some stuff mowed, and then go film some other videos for Side Stuff Adventures um, as well. I've got some cool ideas that I talked about before, um, an airplane crash site up here in Pine Mountain, Georgia, and um, uh, a place where FDR, um, President Roosevelt, used to picnic up in Pine Mountain that I thought would be um, a nice thing to, to show you guys on the other channel, Side Stuff Adventures. Um, so somebody wants me to say hello to Jeffrey Hanna. Hello to Jeffrey Hanna. Give a shout out there. And I missed it. Somebody, um, sent a, uh, $5 super chat, um, to me earlier and I did not see that. So, um, shout out to whoever did that. Um, I appreciate it very much, but, uh, that's it. Um, let me know if you guys want to see anything else, um, while we're out here today um actually there, there's something else that i wanted to show you i saw you i saw earlier um before i started filming and it's uh it's this right here now this is the uh the black walnut from our uh black walnut tree right here which i need to come back out here and clear more wisteria off because that never ends now this is the stuff that dyes your hands black the nuts inside of this shell and I'm not gonna touch it. I'm gonna just flip it off. But if you touch that stuff um, in there, it'll just just really, really mess your hand up. I'll, I'll sacrifice my thumb right there. Um, but that's that. Uh, that's, what, uh, that's what I was thinking this tree was when I first um, filmed it. Um, and uh, so it's neat to see the nuts dropping from it charlotte yannis charlotte yannis did the super chat shout out to charlotte there thank you very much um there have i considered um more photos on the site um yes um i will do that soon for sure um uh somebody asked if i burned the brush pile from the um uh magnolia tree cleanup and I have not yet um I figured that's what you meant Maureen I figured that's what you meant um the chickens I would show you the chickens today but they're scattered everywhere and they're in the woods so I don't know where they're at at the moment honestly um if I see one I'll show it to you but otherwise they're they're off in the woods doing their own thing so you will have to wait um I'm surprised you don't hear them I'm gonna come and sit down in the uh in the spot here yes i have determined your favorite word of all time is um yeah you're right you, you know when doing public speaking you can't say stuff like that right you, you can't say um and it's uh it's something that's uh, built in to someone's speech pattern and it's a terrible terrible habit i'll have to try to break that one day or not or i'll just come on here be myself with all my flaws and all of that because that's that's um what i do already right i show you guys my my failures my wins and everything you um somebody said that having youtube channel like this and it was, it was one of you guys one of the viewers said that having youtube channel is like living in a fishbowl when um when you're i just said it again didn't i um when you <laughs> i can't i can't help it let me let me try my best not to do it We'll try here. I probably will fail. I hear a chicken. Anyway, uh, you, you live in a fish bowl with doing this sort of stuff and your personal life is definitely full front for everybody to talk smack about or uh, 
you know, otherwise um, be a part of, which is the thing that I, I think of the most. Somebody said, asked me a question, made a comment the other day and said, do you feel like you're talking to friends when you do this live chat? And absolutely, absolutely I do. Um, you know, it's just, we come in here and I'm sharing with my day with you guys and it is like sitting here talking to friends of course it's a it's all a one-sided conversation just me rambling but it's, it's very nice to be able to do this and for a long time um i didn't really want to do these live videos because i wasn't sure i wasn't sure it how i would feel about doing stuff that's completely live you know if i if i mess up if i say something silly or something like that it's it's just it's right here it's live um but i've gotten used to it now so you know um yeah you're right it's not one-sided it's not one-sided when i do the lives um you you guys are here you guys are commenting and so that is that is awesome um charlotte says why would anyone talk smack about a good guy like you people people love to love to hate and talk smack about anything they can. I've had um, people say just vicious, vicious stuff about me, whether it be from the farm or sidestep adventures, and it's it's crazy, really. Uh, but that's how it is. Whenever you put yourself in a public light, you know people are always going to have their own opinions about stuff, and it's something that you just have to get used to, honestly with this sort of thing and you have to have a really thick skin doing uh, YouTube videos or any anything where you put yourself out there like this um, you just have to have a thick skin and that's why I tell a lot of people um, about YouTube too when they want to get into videos because a lot of people that want to start YouTube channels have an interest in it will ask me for advice and that sort of thing because I have been very very blessed with YouTube um, and doing this and the fact that I've, I've been successful at it and it's such an absolute blessing never to be taken for granted that I have this this ability to do these YouTube videos and that's what gives me the ability to work on this farmhouse to have this and it's something never to be taken for granted and always be grateful for so um, Danielle says about the same as edited. I try when I do edited videos to uh, to speak to speak properly to uh, make sure make sure I get it all in there. The videos aren't scripted, that's for sure. But if I if I say something and I catch myself, you know, twisting words or saying something really silly, then I can always go back re-record that. Don't get that chance here. But anyway, this has been this has been nice today. Um, it is a beautiful day out here in Georgia. It really, really is, and it's a um, it's a special day for me in my own self with my own self. Um, it's a special day because I feel good today, better than I have in weeks, um, in a month or more um there's been it has been a hard hard couple of weeks um a hard month probably and it uh it's good to get back out here and you know have some kind of um normalcy i guess you'd say um even if it's just walking around this place today rambling it's nice to to be out here and feel feel some kind of way again a good way daniel is here with us he says more aqua adventures and absolutely daniel i would love to do that um daniel has a boat that you guys saw if you watch sidestep adventures that we went out and did some fun stuff on so hopefully we'll do some more of that stuff coming up too um plus we're gonna put daniel back to work out here on the farm and we're never gonna let him forget that. I talked to Uncle Jay yesterday, Daniel. Um, had a very nice conversation with him. Um, I told Uncle Jay that when he comes back out here, when you bring him out here, that we'll have to get him to tell the peacock story um, out here because that's that's a fun story. Um, so, well, I do metal detecting at the bird farm. So actually yesterday I went to a friend of mine's house 
and did some metal detecting. And that was the first day and these all of these weeks um this month that was the first day that i actually got out and did something that was uh like sidestep adventure stuff um i didn't film it but we went out and metal detected and i'm hoping to go back there and do it again and film it another day but um if you go back to um, Sidestep Adventures. There is a video of the place where I went yesterday and it is an old concrete bridge. I don't remember the title of the video. Um, I do know that uh, Omar, Daniel, and Matt were out there with us. We went down to that, um, to that bridge. Matt had taken me there and it's a beautiful, beautiful place. I shared pictures of it on the Sidestep Adventures Facebook page yesterday, um, and it was just absolutely beautiful yesterday, but it's a really cool place. Um, it is on private property, um, and we, we have permission to be there, of course. Um, in fact, I was invited out there yesterday to metal detect, and I was very grateful for the opportunity to go out there and do that um, because it was, uh, it was nice to get out and do something through that. Um, Osa Albinson sends um, $50 in SEK. I don't know what that currency is, but I do appreciate, very appreciate the, uh, the super chat there. That means a lot. Um, so this bridge is a really cool place. It was, um, there was a train trussle there too. The train trussle is long gone. And it was, uh, I forgot the name of the rail line. Um, but it was a really, it was a happening place back in the late 1800s to about the 1950s. Um, the Baptist church used to um, baptize in a pool in that creek. And they stopped that in about the 1950s when they uh, sent, uh, when they built a indoor baptistry. Now that information came, came from Dan Aiken, um, local historian. And he also uh, told me that the train would stop there at the uh, at the trussle that would cross this creek and they would it was basically a big picnic area they had a big picnic there um for the at the train stop one time and then the uh the other um uh, the road with the um concrete bridge uh there um was also a, a picnic spot there was also the other cool thing about it is general low um used to have a big house there that was a stagecoach stop back in the um 1800s of course um in the days of stagecoaches so it loaded with history now did we find anything um i found just about every bolt nut that the railroad lost out there <laughs> that was for sure um also found a um also found a uh, shotgun shell, an old shotgun shell um, from one of the paper um, shelled shotgun shells. Paper shelled shotgun shells, is that, is that the right way to say it? Maybe just a paper shotgun shell. Um, found the old uh, brass or whatever material it was into that. Um, it was an old one though. Uh, what else did I find? I found uh, Seth, my friend who invited me out, he had found an Indian head penny out there. Um, a while back and so that's one of my uh, bucket list finds for the farm I really want to find one out here because that's about as old as currency as you're gonna get um, in this part of Georgia um, because you know this this area really wasn't settled until 1828 um, so I mean you can you can find older currency but this this house um, here this farm is dates to the 1880s so you know that's about as old as you're gonna find out here but I want to find one um, when um, oh, what's his name oh, Brandon Brandon don't be mad at me Brandon when Brandon um, from Adventure Archaeology sorry uh, brain fog um, when Brandon from Adventure Archaeology and I were out here and we did that big metal detecting thing out here there was he wanted to find a coin a and a button. I think those were his two big goals to find out here. And we did, we found the World War I Eagle button, um, which is amazing. I still don't know who would have served in World War I that would have lived out here on the farm. Um, but, so their button would have wound up in the garbage pile over there. Um, and we found pocket watch backs and 
um, beautiful, I think I did a live video maybe um, when I was metal detecting out here. I know I didn't do a real video. I think I did a live video and showed y'all um, something that I found. And it was uh, just a beautiful piece of jewelry. So there's lots, some, somebody asked about metal detecting out here. There's a lot more to metal detect and find out here, of course. And uh, I'll get to that one day. What are you looking at, Blue? Lots to do. Um, so somebody asked about the big rooster and he's out here wandering around too. So I used to do magnet fishing um, too, yes. And I have a brand new magnet that I have only used one time and I actually used it out here on the farm. I used it right over there picking up nails where I had burned wood that had nails in it and I needed to drive the deuce and a half through that area. So I, I took the magnet and waved it around on the ground. Um, and uh, that was the only time that that magnet got used. So it needs to go in the water. We need to find some stuff. My second or third time magnet fishing, I found a gun, which was really cool. Um, so I need to do it again. The other Robert has wanted to do some magnet fishing too. So we'll have to get together and do that. Um, as well and Daniel with um, these aqua adventures um, that he talked about we can take the magnet out on his boat and uh, do some stuff like that too that would be fun so I think that that is going to conclude this video today this live chat we have been here for a long time we've been talking for 46 minutes here um, can you give me the full name of General Lowe General Henry Lowe is who it is. Um, he's buried in the Waverly Hall, Georgia Cemetery, which is formerly known as Mount Zion Cemetery, I believe. Um, that's the correct name. It used to be a uh, church cemetery and later became the town cemetery. So it has, it has two names, the Waverly Hall Cemetery and also Mount Zion Cemetery. But that is where General Henry Lowe is buried. And I, I, I'm going to tell you another story about Henry Lowe's place before we go, because it's a, it's a really cool story. It's, we're getting into buried treasure and legends here. And the reason that I actually wound up out at Seth's place yesterday, um, in the first place to, to, uh, mag, uh, to metal detect out there. Uh, so this, this story goes, goes way back. Um, he had called me the other day and we were talking about uh, their property and Henry Lowe's place. In fact, if you go, what started this whole conversation off, if you go to the Sidestep Adventures Facebook page, um, you can see a picture of General Lowe's home. Um, the picture was taken in the 1920s. Uh, the house burned down at some time between the 1920s and now, I'm not sure when. Uh, the picture was taken in the 1920s, but it, the picture is such good quality that it looks like that it looks like it was taken um, more recently. Um, beautiful picture of Henry Lowe's place. But so we started talking about Henry Lowe's place, and uh, he had told me a legend that he had heard that during the Civil War, when Wilson's Raiders was coming down this area. Um, that Henry Lowe had his valuables from the house buried, including a piano, was apparently buried. And that was just a legend that he had heard. Well, to back that legend up, um, I've heard several legends about buried treasure and his place. Um, when in the Methodist church, when I was a kid um, and, and going to the Methodist church, um, there was a member of the church. He was maybe a deacon or some kind of high-ranking member. I don't remember um, exactly what his position was, but I do remember very vividly. And this goes back. This goes back to my love of, of history that has gone way back. Um, after the uh, after the church service that day, we were brought into the fellowship hall, all the church members, and this this deacon 
um, of the church or whatever it is. I mean, the terminology could be wrong, but he was a Mason, and I think he was like the leader of the local Masonic lodge that was nearby there, and he brought all the church members um, over to the fellowship hall to give a slideshow of local Masonic history um, from this area. And it was, um, and so it was a lot of it that I remember, I mean, I was like 10 or 11, so, you know, I, I don't remember this clearly, but I remember pictures of graves and, um, and he was showing, you know, founding members of the local Masonic Lodge. Um, but he told a story, and this is the story that has spoke, that has um, uh, spoke to me. Is that the right word? This is um, a story that has uh, stayed with me um, throughout all these years, through 20 years or more, um, since that story was told in the Fellowship Hall of the Methodist Church by this, this old man who... I don't know if he's still living or not, but who is leader of the Masonic Lodge. And he told a story of treasure. Um, and it was, it had to have been about Henry Lowe. It had to have been because um, I, I don't remember. He probably said a name, but the name, you know, I didn't pay attention to or I don't remember. You know, it's been 20 years after all. Um, but I, uh, I remember the story and it has to be Henry Lowe because the, the facts all add up to Henry Lowe that um, during the war, the Civil War, um, at the end of it, Wilson's Raiders came through Columbus and then came down, or then went north, I guess, um, uh, of Columbus. And, you know, I, I, I'm telling the story and I've got to interrupt myself because everything is down in the south. You know, you're going to come down here. It doesn't matter if it's north, if it's south. You know, if you come down to the farm, um, it doesn't matter if you're coming north or south, you come down. But anyway, um, the, uh, the uh, Union Army, Wilson's Raiders, had made their way through Columbus and were headed north. And Henry Lowe's place was in their way. Um, and the story that this man told was that Henry Lowe had buried all of his gold, all of his riches, in the banks of this creek. Um, that was behind his house, the creek that I was at yesterday with the old bridge metal detecting. He had buried all of his treasures on the bank of this creek because he didn't want the Union Army to raid his house and to get them. Now, he was away for some reason when the Union Army came through. He was away from his house and his wife ran out of the house. And around when the Union Army approached their house, his wife ran out of the house and around her neck, she wore a Masonic emblem. And the Union Army, Wilson's Raiders, spared their house, did not raid it, and did not burn it down because they were uh, Masons. And, you know, I guess whoever was in the uh, Union Army there was also a Mason. That actually happened a lot um, during the Civil War is that Southern um, plantation owners that were Masons, their houses were often spared and not um, raided by the Union Army when they came down because they were masons it's a um it's a story that i've heard told time and time again but that was a story of henry Lowe's place so that is the second time the point of this story the point of this rambling rambling story is that that is the second time that i've heard of buried treasure that henry Lowe buried all of his treasures on the bank of this creek during the civil war now you know, after the war, he probably dug it all up and uh, put it back in his house because he um, lived there for years after the war. Um, he was there when the uh, train came through in the 1880s and the railroad came through in the 1880s. So no doubt all of his treasures were, were recovered from the creek banks, but maybe they left something there. Really fascinating place, um, lots of fascinating stories. On that note, I'm going to sign out of this video. I'm gonna clock out. I'm actually gonna clock out of YouTube and I'm gonna clock into some farm stuff that I have to do today. So, um, Jamie says, I am a Mason and what you were saying, you can't supplant a fellow brother. Yes, um, you, you would probably be able to explain that much better than I was able to. But I'm clocking out of YouTube, I'm clocking into, Old Bird Farm work.
today that I've got to get into. I've also got to do some other stuff today. So it's going to be a busy day for Robert. But I thank you all for joining me today. We've, we've been chatting here for 54 minutes. Um, some people asked if I was going to leave this chat up. And yes, I have been leaving the live chats up. So I plan on doing that. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time.